Welcome back, episode three of your Monster Energy Racer X preview shows for Monster Energy AMA Supercross in 2024. Jason Wagant, Steve Mathis, Jason Thomas here. We've been going to the races for decades. Even if you haven't, you probably think you're smarter than us. But still, listen to us opine on a couple of key riders in the 2024 championship. I think there's so much talk about the Sexton switch and the Webb switch and Tomac coming back and the Lawrence brothers moving in. But let us not forget there were a couple other riders who either won or looked like they were going to win races last year that we've maybe forgotten about. So we're going to start episode three talking about Justin Barsha, who did get a win. And he got it in the mud, but I'll be honest, he might have won in the dry. He was really fast at the end. We didn't get to see the full Malcolm Stewart menu, but he definitely looked good when he was on track. So shout out to our sponsors, Monster, Maxis, Maxima, and Fly. And now let's talk riders. Uh, Justin Barsha, I think underrated how good he was because we haven't seen him at 100% since Nashville, but he was good. Yeah, he went out with an injury at Nashville. It's a yeah. shame, right? Never really got, got to finish the series, much like Cooper Webb. And yeah, I think Barsha is just the guy. I mean, look, he's going to give us highlights. Yep. Good, bad, whatever. There's going to be Justin Barsha highlights. Uh, he's always an exciting rider to watch. Anywhere, anytime he's on the track, he drives the other guys absolutely crazy. Can he get another win? Absolutely, I think he can. He, you just can't count the guy like that out. And I think, you know, from race to race, he'll provide us with some great memories and some great uh, fodder for our podcast shows because that's what he does. He's entertaining. We have always debated the Barsha level. I've always said that Barsha needs that 5% more speed. If he gets starts and they don't really want to deal with him, he's like the porcupine and you've playing with balloons, you don't want to go anywhere near him, he can win races that way. Last year to me was the first time I'm like, dude, Barsha can come through the pack. He almost did it at Indy and beat everybody straight up. I haven't seen that level maybe ever. He looked really great. I mean, that would, I agree with you. Typically, he is the guy that starts up front, stays there. Good luck passing him. Yeah. That was a little bit different where he was moving through guys. He like passed Chase Sexton on his way to the front, almost got Kenny. That was, uh, I thought, refreshing. He's been around a long time. Yeah to see someone do something they haven't done much of late in their career yeah. is very interesting to me. So uh, between that and then, you know, the, the comments that he made about the chassis where he really likes, he loved it. Yeah. He likes yeah. the original chassis where a lot of the guys, Chase Sexton's moving to the new chassis. That stuff's always interesting to me because I think it is a lot of personal preference. Uh, but more importantly, we know he's going to be happy with his setup and very comfortable with what he shows up on at Anaheim. It's not going to be this learning process about the motorcycle. He's going to be showing up very similar to what he departed the series on in Nashville. Steve, Barsha, one of the few riders you probably ever interviewed after a race that was saying the bike is awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's not he, – look, he – Say what you want about Barsha, and a yep. lot of us have, and, and you know, he, a lot of us have said a lot of things yes. about Justin Barsha. He gives you an honest effort. I think as a mechanic or a team manager, I would love to have him on my team. Yes, he would cause me to face palm sometimes, <laughs> but for the most part, that dude is giving you 100% effort every time on the track. I think he's a very honest, workmanlike kind of guy. He doesn't uh, blame other people. He doesn't finger point. I think he'd be a really good rider to work with. With some uh, times where you're like, oh, I can't believe he just did that. But he's a closet trainer, loves it. He's in great yeah. physical shape. Yep. So, yeah, I, I got a lot of respect for Justin Barsha. Okay, let's go to Malcolm Stewart, who we forget was leading Anaheim 1. I believe he had the fastest qualifying time at round 2 and won his heat race, and that was pretty much the end. He crashed in that round 2 main, then tore his ACL, or everything. I guess every ligament in his knee. We finally got him to admit, then he was gone. He never even raced round 3, and we never saw him for the rest of the year. But we have our first right here. Sound the alarms. Get the squad ready. Mm -hmm. Spotlight on. We have a flying at the test track guy, and there is no doubt. Flying at the test track. Everyone is saying it. Malcolm yeah. Stewart. Yeah, Jeremy Martin. Jeremy Martin, maybe for the first Known time. Known as a flying yeah, at the test track Yeah, we didn't hear that guy. this year. So yes. he's passing the mantle on to Malcolm. Heard it from a few people down at Alden's factory. Uh, not surprising. I mean, it's Malcolm Stewart, man. The guy's so talented, right? Yeah. Uh, but this is a serious injury he's coming off of. He and his teammate. What you just said about him kind of surprised me because I think he's been gone so long I kind of forgot that. I remember thinking both he and his teammate didn't look amazing on the Rockstar Husqvarna's. But maybe I'm forgetting some. Well, that's the thing. It was the only the first two rounds, but he was serious those first two rounds. Yeah, I, uh, I'm interested to see what happens here because you never really know until you show up at Anaheim. I, I think you can. it can be fool's gold sometimes. I know that Malcolm's going to be fast. He's always been fast, but... I think some of the comments that you heard, I heard, are like, 
he should win a one. Like he's these were classified meetings that Steve was not a part rest. of. That we yes, heard fair this. enough. Yes, yeah. yes. Sorry, Steve, you didn't get this inside yeah. information yeah. that we got. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they were convinced, like, hey, if he doesn't win, like something went wrong. Like he should win. The question I have is, what if you don't know what the level of someone else is on? What if you don't know that Jet Lawrence could show up and go faster than Malcolm can, right? And you, and no one knows that until you get on the same racetrack and you're racing against different motorcycles and different chassis at Anaheim. So um, I did think it was really confidence-inspiring for what Malcolm's season could be, but I can't help but remember last year when – Christian and Cooper Webb and Plessinger and all these guys showed up and thought they were just ready to be world beaters. And then they ran into this guy named Eli Tomac that showed them what the pace was really needed to be. Yes. He's flying at the test track. Craig says that AP says that RJ Hampshire on a 250 says that, but he hasn't ridden against Tomac and he hasn't ridden at the Lawrence compound. It would be interesting if there was an intersection where maybe Sexton and Malcolm get on the same track, maybe in California, but that's, I'm sure you saw Chad Reed flying at the test track in the off season. But was he riding against Carmichael and Stu? Yeah, I mean, that's it's always the question. You yes. And another wrinkle to it is all these guys are racing against the same motorcycle that they're on. Yes. What if, you know, they didn't know <sighs> that Tomac had really turned a corner on the Yamaha. Or yeah. what if, you know, Jet and Hunter really figured out another setting on the Honda. Yeah. And now they're on it. Or the you, Cowie guys or yeah, whoever. Yeah, yeah. Jason Anderson's yeah. now found a new level on the 24. Yep. Yeah. No one's going to know that till Anaheim. So I, I, I always take them with a little bit of a grain of salt. I think you can glean something from it. Like, hey, this guy's riding pretty well. But you, you can, I don't think you can go in and say, that's the guy to beat because everyone around him saying that's the guy to beat. I don't think it works that way. Okay. Uh, let's thank our sponsors again. It's Monster Energy, Maxis, Maxima, and Fly. We'll get a little more into detail uh, with them. But we do want to talk about an addition to this group. There's so much talk, of course, about Jet Lawrence. But don't forget his brother Hunter, who I think is under the radar, because, look, it's not really fair for Hunter to be compared to this. Could he maybe win 72 races like Jeremy McGrath? Could he win 10 as a rookie, Jet Lawrence? That's pretty crazy to have to be measured by that standard. But I think if you take Jet out of the picture, rookie hype coming in, we would be buzzing about Hunter. If you just take Jet out of the picture, this would be a big addition to the class. And then you saw in Paris, he was good. He was really good in Paris. Like we talked about with Webb, it means... Something doesn't mean nothing. Yes. We just don't know exactly. It doesn't right. mean everything. Um, <clears throat> first of all, well. Like Hunter and Roxon, you could easily argue we're a similar level there for whatever that means. Yeah, but what's the difference? Now, to pour some cold water on, on some people, okay. what's the difference between Hunter moving up and Aaron Plessinger moving up, Zach Osborne moving up? Christian Craig. Christian Craig. Yeah. Well, Craig didn't win a national title, but – Okay, like, what's the difference? He did beat Hunter know? the year before in that Supercross title, though. Yeah. Um, but my point is, we did – I feel like there was a lot of buzz when those guys moved up. Yeah, but, but – okay. But he can't quite get that because yeah, but there's more buzz for Jen. What did we see from oh, those guys? I, you know me with rookies. Yeah, yeah. What did we see? Uh, so Not getting through races, usually. Yeah, yes. so maybe – I don't think Hunter, as great as he is, is somewhat different than an Aaron Plessinger, than a Zach Osborne. He's on that level. He's a national title. He's a, he's a veteran guy that finally won the Supercross class, and you could almost say because of other guys moving out, it was his turn, and he took advantage of it. So when you look at an AP and you look at a Christian Craig, you look at a Zach Osborne, um, they were fifth, sixth place guys. Yeah. I and mean, obviously we'll get to AP in a second here. So they is weren't that, winning races no. right off the bat. Or even yeah. making podiums. Yeah. Or even exactly. making podiums. Yep. So is that where Hunter's at? I mean, that's where I tend to think so. Now, very impressive in Paris. Uh, but I still I'm gonna go back to history of Hunter's type of guy in the past and say, good season, probably won't make a podium. Yeah. You have to be generational to be considered higher than that. So yeah, you're right. We need to take the rookie thing and put it back out on him. Yeah. And be like, hey, just Get through all 17 rounds, and that would be good. Should we be thinking anything more than that? Like, we need to just treat him like a rookie, and it might take a little time to be a race winner kind of guy. Yeah, I think it's fair to expect him to be in that war zone with Craig and yeah. maybe Malcolm and AP and Barsha. And there's going to be a ton of guys. Jason Anderson, Adam Cincerillo, yeah. <clears throat> Jorge Prado. Like, there's going to be a, <laughs> just an endless barrage of riders in that pack. So you have to think – a few things. Can you stay healthy to where the thin the field thins out? Yep. Can you get good starts so maybe you're ahead of that fray? To me, that's where our answer will come. If he doesn't get good starts, if he 
is a little banged up, which we saw a lot in 2023. He was hurt a lot of 2023. Not necessarily always his fault, but he was dealing with injuries the whole time. To me, that's that's where the results will come or not come is in the margins, the little details. Because I don't think he's he's not Jet, he's not Tomac, where he can overcome whatever whatever's going on, the bad start, something the bike's not perfect. He he's not going to be able to just overcome that no matter what. So it's going to be in the little details of whether he's really successful or is just kind of in the pack. We tend to always remember the rookies that came in. Unbelievable. McGrath and Dungey winning titles in the first year. Roxon winning, really, in his first full-time season. One, Anaheim won. But that's not the norm. That's not the norm. Yeah. Like, your point is, most of the time, they're fifth-ish. And two years later, you're like, now he's a guy. Right. So, so maybe yeah, I look, I look at a yeah. veteran guy yeah. that finally broke through in 250s. Not yeah. a phenom. Not yeah. somebody who came in right away. Hunter fits the bill of these other guys. We'll, we'll see. Now, one thing that would help is how dialed in they have that bike. And I believe our own Chris Kiefer, our testing guru, is the only member of the media that's ridden one of these factory what? Honda what? motorcycles. Not Hunter's bike because he wasn't on a 450 last year. Oh, no, wait. He rode Hunter's 250 last year. So it's time for Monster Energy information. Monster Info, Kiefer. Let's talk about the Honda. And let's also talk about uh, the Kawasaki that Adam Cincirillo and Jason Anderson will be riding in 2020. Thanks, Weech. All right, so one of my favorite riders, just because the person that he is, is Adam. Uh, I'm sorry, Betts, I'm wearing his jersey. My fault. But, uh, of course, the 2024 KX450 is all new. Jason Anderson, Adam Cincirillo, uh, they'll be on that bike all year. And for you guys watching this, Sometimes, just sometimes, production and race team run parallel to each other. And they, at times too, intersect. So, the consumer, uh, magazine shootouts, as painful as it is to me, manufacturers do listen to what shootouts, as well as the consumer, you people, want out there. And then, race team has to follow suit with what production has. In this case, 2024 KX450. All new bike, new frame. We've been riding it quite a bit lately. And for me, right away, there's a lot more front end feel. So what does that mean for Adam and Jason? That means I feel like they're going to have a better Supercross platform with this new bike. Uh, I feel like they're going to have a better cornering KX. I have heard, you know, that those things that we talk about before these Supercross races heard. I have heard that these guys are looking for more front wheel feel. They will get that from the 24 KX 450 as well as they are not on the BFRC. Just because Chase loves it doesn't mean other guys love it. We have heard from both of these riders that last year they could not get comfortable with their motorcycle and the shock had something to do with that. Coming from a Suzuki uh, RMZ 450, they have a BFRC on it. I am not a fan of it, so to finally ditch that thing and have a standard... Uh, factory shock on there I think is going to do wonders with this new frame look for an A1 Jason Anderson and Adam Cincerillo going through the whoops this is going to be a really telltale of what this frame can do and then watch how these guys can cut down in the bull turns as the track gets rougher about the 15 minute mark of these main event main events because this is what I noticed with the production machine is that this frame suits a supercross style rider better than last year so I'm excited to watch these guys and then we don't have enough time to talk about the Honda Weege. I could sit here and just create a whole show about what this factory Honda feel like. So is Hunter Lawrence, is Jet Lawrence going to share the same frame? That was a thing last year. Chase Sexton, Jet Lawrence, they had different frames in outdoors. Steve and I rode the bikes. We both unanimously said that Jet's bike was way easier to ride, way more comfortable. So for me, a factory Honda is the elite of the elite of factory motorcycles. You watch Jet Lawrence ride, just like I talked about with Ken Rocks, and you can understand once you ride Jet's motorcycle how easy it is to ride. Jet never looks like he's trying. You don't even know he's on a heater lap, and then all of a sudden he's a second or two seconds faster than the other guys. It's amazing. So for me, Jet Lawrence has a huge advantage. His motorcycle has not changed. Sure, he's a rookie, but, I mean, come on. If he comes out swinging an A1, I feel like that's a wrap. That bike is proven. They don't have to go to a new bike until next year. So Jet Lawrence and Hunter Lawrence has an advantage. They have so many notes. Honda has so many notes from previous races. So 
these guys that do not have to change motorcycles or new motorcycles coming in, I think have an advantage. Plus one, Jet Lawrence, Hunter Lawrence. Uh, you wrote it? I wrote it, too. He said Steve. Yeah, I wrote it, too. I was at Washougal. I wrote him. They let you ride factory yeah, Hondas? They did, and it was really cool. Is it true that those bikes, those fire-breathing factory mm -hmm. 450s, literally have so much power it could rip <laughs> they, they, arms out of the sockets? Uh, my my lawyers have advised me not to go oh, really? further than that. But, <laughs> okay. yeah, there, there's been some issues with uh, Mr. Lindstrom at Honda. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be in uh, touch. Mr. Sexton's bike had he, so much power. Yeah, uh, it was really cool to ride Hunter's bike for sure. But, I mean, I'm too fat and slow to really make a 250 sing. But so I like the 450s better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th let's go to the Kawasaki's now. We knew we'd have to tackle that either with the Anderson or Cena. Can I just? Show. I want to yes. just quickly. Oh yes. The order of this is once again Here screwed up. Okay. All like, right. Aaron Plessinger was a half a lap from winning a 450 Supercross. Yeah. And was on the podium a bunch. Yeah. And Adam Cincerlo made it all year. Yeah. And you put Hunter. Ahead of those guys. This is in, not a ranking. In this is a, I would yeah, they're in the same show. This is Kiefer's yeah, segment but, is to talk about okay, but the it, Honda because we it haven't seems talked about like, it yet. It seems like your order is once again, no. sir. Hunter, right. Hunter should be in this so, group, though. Yes, but at, the end, group. but at the end. Well, I don't think yeah, it's, but Kiefer's it's, segment, yeah. I, then I have to bring Kiefer back. He already said what he okay. said. This is in no particular yeah. order. Okay. I, to him it is. But he wants participation trophies. Imagine that. Dazzy on line three. This is how Steve does it. You're the one that's demoting Hunter. You want Hunter demoted below Plessinger, so Dazzy on line just, three for you. <laughs> Dazzy on line three for you. <laughs> for you. Yeah. I, I just I think like just let's give the veterans the, the nod ahead of the rookie. Okay, well Dazzy you know? on line three. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's talk to this Cowie and Cian Cerullo. So yeah. uh, new bike, like lately it seems like the new bike bad has been the worry coming yeah. into new seasons. Cowie I feel like historically doesn't really completely miss the mark. I feel like out of all teams they're the most consistently pretty good. They never have horrible seasons. Mm -hmm except last year. So are they going to be okay with this? No. I think so. Sorry. Oh, no. Nope. Okay. David, David Millsap's on line four. That's that's the only one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like a 30-year span. Yeah. I think they will. Um, I think from their comments when we spoke to them, they seemed really uncomfortable, and I think their results kind of reflected that. Last you look, year. Yes, yes. You look at the regression that Jason Anderson made, and he kind of pointed to the shock change that they made wasn't the right direction. So I think it is going to be greener pastures in 2024, I think it also kind of gave them hope. It's like, okay, we've got this new platform. Ta I've talked to other people that have ridden it. They said it is a better stock base to work from. Uh, so I don't think it goes backwards from here. And that, that's really all you can ask for. Can it just be better than where we were in 2023? And then sky's the limit from there. Look, Joe Shimoda saved Kawasaki from their Ooh. first winless season since 1982. And he did it at the final round. Yes. Um, Otherwise, yeah, guys, Kawasaki was not going to win a race. I know. And that's a pretty remarkable thing to say, right, between Adam Cien, Cirillo, Jason Anderson, and everybody else. At the whole pro circuit team, yeah. Yeah, so things were bleak uh, uh, in the greener pastures uh, over there. But, um, yeah, I mean, look, Adam Adam had an arm issue, and that's what held him back. Uh, had? Not, not the bike. Had? Last year he had an arm issue. This year it will. we will see. Okay. Yeah. That's um, what I'm worried about. I still haven't yeah. heard that it's good. No, I don't think it'll ever be back yeah. to 100%. But – but I think Adam's year was perfectly fine. His arm held him back, but he made every race but two, I believe. Yeah. And good on him for doing it. I think that's what he really wanted to do. And, I mean, is it too late, JT, to see Adam start topping fastest qualifiers and winning heat races, let's say? Um, I, like, I, are those days gone? I think the fastest lap thing – is still in play. Okay. I do think that that – I don't know that we're going to see it. I just think it's possible. I think winning races, even a, even maybe a heat race, is going to be really challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I just – every time I've ever seen him really push the limit and go to that edge where he – that's the pace required, it just seems like he has issues holding on to that. Yeah. So um, yeah. it's unfortunate. We all hate it. Adam's one of the most personable, wisest um, – he has such a great perspective on life as a racer. I just don't know if he's going to be that race-winning guy moving forward. Yeah, it's interesting to see if he can get it back for sure. I think we're all cheering for him. You know, I Absolutely. mean, there was at one point he went seven straight practices being the fastest 450 Supercross rider. Yep. Who knocked him off? Took him down, Marty. Marty Davalos. <laughs> Marty took him Davalos. Down, <laughs> which Adam down. said if it was going to be anybody. Yes. He was happy it was Marty. But that's where we were at. Seven straight practices. Adam Cilicerillo was a. I might have been more. I'm just thinking yeah. it was seven. Was the fastest guy. And we're at now where Adam's seventh, eighth place guy, you know, he got on the podium last year. It was a yeah. very emotional one. Yep. He got a little 
fortunate to get that. And we were all just stoked for a podium, and he was stoked. That's where we're at. When uh, we gave Kiefer the jersey that he put on over yeah. there, uh, we were remarking, oh, that was 2020 when Adam was battling Osborne for the 450 National Motocross Championship as a rookie. Anaheim won, could have won it, battled Barsha to yep. the end. Yep. You would have never thought that we were setting up for where we are now. Yeah. Where we're like, ooh, can he? We're get like, a oh, podium? he got a podium. Yay. Yes. You know? E exactly. Yeah, yeah. How, how the mighty have fallen. Right. And it comes down to the arm. Like, he did yep. say he's not a bike guy. He doesn't complain about the bike, but he did say uh, that was about I think the, it's most, the most uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. Yep. What, what's up? I, I thought it was interesting for him. I beg to differ. Oh, you heard a again, lot of bike stuff. Again, you guys being oh. in these meetings That's with what these he told riders. Us. That's what he told us. You know, but you're getting the, the sell job. You're not getting the real I see. info. I've but. never heard him complain about a motorcycle ever until he said, yeah, last year mm -hmm. it Fair. was not where we needed to be. Fair enough. We'll move all on. all yeah. I really wanted to hear out of that was him confirming – Jason Anderson's feelings on the bike. Yeah. I don't care if it's the most com uncomfortable. All I wanted to do was some hear some sort of confirmation on that complaint that like, yeah. cause otherwise if AC's like, no dude, I ran that, that shock and everything was fine. I just, yeah, yeah my arm, I'd be like, oh, okay. Is that really the case? Or are we getting sold right. by Anderson about having a bad year? One more router to talk about. Mm. Some think that he should have been further up in the show, but yeah. I wanted to get that Honda Cowie bike discussion in. So now we talked about Aaron. Now we talk about Aaron Plessinger. Well, who would be who would make the crowd happier if they finally get that win? AP or Mookie? Which one? If the crowd could pick, you can only pick one. Uh, yeah, it's a, good it's a question. burning it's, building. It's a great and question. And you got Mookie yeah. and AP, two guys that are loved. I'm gonna go AP. I would have said Malcolm Stewart before Detroit. Okay. Now I go AP. Yeah. Okay. That was. Uh, what do you think? Heartbreaking. Yeah. Who would they want? I, I think you're right because it's owed. Yeah. It feels like the sport owes. Aaron won. And what we found out in these top secret meetings that Steve cannot go to. So, JT, he makes your career on television by giving you this interview. And he ends it with, we're going to Seattle next week. I love Seattle. We're going to get this one. And it was a dud. Well, he, he said he could barely stand. Well, he didn't tell us that at the time. <laughs> fair, now he said fair. he could barely stand the yeah, next week. So yeah. I'm like, okay, that wasn't maybe a freak deal. Maybe he could replicate that again, but he was banged up from that crash. Well, I think the most interesting – part of all that and and I really didn't get a straight answer from him and maybe I'll pursue this if I get a chance yeah. to interview him on television is true reporter now mm. yeah. what was the difference like where did that, that performance come from because yeah. he rode away from everybody right yep. I saw I literally watched Chase Sexton look up and say I gotta go get this guy like I could see it in his eyes his yeah. body language like okay yeah. there's AP I need to go get him and he couldn't he yeah. could not do it AP's pace was simply too good that night that was not the case for all of 2023. That was by far the outlier race. So why why did it happen? Was it just one of those things where I just caught fire and I don't know why, you know? But that's the thing he needs to channel. He needs to be able to find that level and and be able to deliver it. That's what the that's what the greats do. The Tomax, we'll see what Jet brings, but Sexton at times, they can consistently deliver that level. And I think if I asked AP, he would genuinely say, I don't know. I don't yeah. know why. Then he would laugh. Fair enough. He, but, he I, but he would be honest enough to ah, say, I don't yeah. know. You know, I need to be able to do that all the time. But that's the magic. That is that is where champions are made. And I know that's super cliche, but champions can harness that level and bring it out almost on demand. Okay, but he's not a champion. I understand. Like now, we, we know what he's going to be, Aaron Plessinger, at this point. He is going to be a hugely popular rider that is capable of race wins, some podiums, and a nice, but you know, good result. I'm just telling like, you, like, that – he, I, why can't he do that more than just once? Like, but, wh why was that race so different for well, him? Ricky Ryan, Nathan Ramsey. We've seen throughout history these. Yeah, it comes together for guys, yeah, right? And Nate Ramsey's when if Carmichael doesn't throw his bike a hundred yards down the stadium, Nate Ramsey doesn't win that race. Like AP, in my opinion, was the best guy that night. He pulled away from those guys. He had a big lead. No one was going to catch him. Yep. That was a different level than we've ever seen from him. How did he find that level? Where was that? And where has it been since? Be interesting to see if he, and I mean, and in this field, he may not win next year. Yeah, and, and then he may go agreed. his entire yeah. career. I know, looking yeah. at a half a lap away yeah. Yeah. from history. Yes, and uh, I mean, look, uh, we know a guy, the big one five. He was two laps away from history. You know, it kind of bugs him a little bit. Guy Cooper bugs him. Guy Cooper threw Down away the last lap several times. Guy Cooper threw away oh, four yeah. wins, but like yeah. it does bug these guys. 
when we talk to them now, and oh, yeah. AP's in that group, man. But I, I'm a huge Aaron Plessinger fan. I just think, like, look, I, I'm a Canadian. Uh, I'm as far away from a cowboy as you can get, you know? Some would yeah. say he is, too, uh, being from Ohio. But I he love loves horses and rides them now. I love He's his persona. Real. I love his attitude. I, you know, I think – I think so highly of him. He is the epitome of like it's more than what you do on the bike to have fans love you, and uh, he's got it. He's got something, and I think it's genuine. I don't think it's an act, you know. No, no, I don't yeah. think it is. And speaking of genuine, you need to go to the area of of Ohio he's from. It's basically Kentucky, so it's more okay. cowboy. Okay, than okay fair enough. Are you guys genuine like the the singer from the nineties? No, okay, no. I mean, he but had, he had a pony. Ride that pony. He had a pony. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Bring it so, all back around. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what AP is. I mean, I just I think he is what he is, and we're going to get some good results from him, but I'm not so sure he wins. Like, I, I would not put him as a race winner no, right now. No, he's never won one yet. Like, not uh, when how can we, you say he's we win? know that you average five winners a year. I think there's a chance yeah. you could have even less this year when you have Chase, Jet, Tomac, Webb, Anderson. Like, th- that's already five right yeah. there. That's almost like the max you're going to get, yep. even with those guys. It, it's not an affront to him. It's just the way the numbers pencil out. We don't get eight winners a year. We, we had don't. seven in 1990, right? I think that yeah, was the modern everybody. record. Right. Yeah. That's well, that's why it's so hard when you have depth because that's, if you look at years ago, why did Ivan Tedesco never win? Why did yeah. Tim Ferry never win? Because it wasn't just if Ricky had a bad night, the doors open. You had Carmichael – or I'm sorry, you had James Stewart, and it, he had to have a bad night. And then you had Chad Reed. Yes. He had to have a bad right. night. It's the same thing for AP now. Now he's going to have to deal with Jet. Because if Tomac has a bad night, perfect. Webb's a little off. Chase goes down, loses the front end. Now you're adding Jet into yeah. it, right? It's just yeah. you need this cavalcade of perfect circumstances to pull it off unless you have this out-of-your-mind ride like you did in Detroit. Yep, and that's pretty much every guy in here except Barsha who sn- sneaks in those wins. Every one of them, Mookie, Hunter, AC, AP. They need these things to work when you're up against competition like that. Uh, one other thing about uh, Plessinger here. You're missing a guy, too, on the sheet. I don't know. That's next show, I guess. Again, there's just not yeah. ranked high enough? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. next year, again, we'll put everybody in show one, and we'll just make blanks. Okay. Two, three, four, we'll just be blank. All right, we can talk about Cade, show four. Okay, that's what yeah. so the people are here to see. Yeah. We can't even talk A-Ray anymore. He's retired. Uh, AP has one year, signed a one-year renewal. I believe if he's, like, top three in a championship, it auto-renews. But I've got to think that there's the footsteps, the specter of Jorge Prado. Now, I know you folks are saying Prado's a gas gas guy. Ah, that gets complicated. He is not a Troy Lee guy. <clears throat> I could see a world where Jorge Prado races full-time in America for Red Bull KTM next year. Where does that leave Plessinger? Could they do a three-rider team? They've done it before. RIP Marvin Muscan. Not retired, but not racing, but they've done three-rider teams. Are you worried at all for Plessinger of he's got to prove something? I personally believe that it sets up too nicely – for Prado to be the long-term answer to Justin Parcher, Justin, Justin Barsha's Marcia. departure. Okay. That's what I think it yeah. sets up so perfectly okay. for that. Um, you look at the gas gas, you look at they, they're going to need a guy. Barsha's not going to be around forever. TLD gear, though. I understand. Well, he's a Thor it, guy. Right, but he's yeah. been on a team deal for a very long time. Right. I've tried to negotiate for that deal. It's, okay. it's been a team deal for a long time. Yeah. So I just think it's a, it's a perfect setup for gas gas to have their new guy yeah. for the long term yeah. as Barsha steps away. Maybe maybe you're right. Maybe he just goes to KTM and that suits it and everything yeah. works out. But I if if you are on the gas gas side, if you are at TLD, if you're a team manager there, if you're Max Lee, whoever, that is such a perfect setup. Bring him in. You find budget to run both of them in 25 because Barsha is going to be there another yes. year, right? Yes. Barsha will be there. But it's that lead in. I think Barsha would be willing to kind of mentor him because he knows he's going to leave. Like I, I don't see a world where Barsha races in 2026. I do okay. not see that okay. happening. Yeah. So they could convince him like, Hey, help him. Like, this is a great way for you to exit and kind of pass the torch. I just think it's a, it's the perfect setup for that. And does it make more sense, Steve, to not have Sexton and Prado together? Like each brand gets a guy maybe. Yeah. I, I'm not sure because there's a little bit of conflicts because Prado races a KTM, right? There's little differences between the gas gas and the, K- and the KTM, and Prado actually was racing the factory KTM with red plastic. In so, the GPs. Yes, yeah. yes. So I don't yeah. know how that all works, like yes. why he prefers the KTM yeah. versus the gas gas or what they can it's quite a brand, do. It's a branding thing. Yeah, but why doesn't he run around? What's on the KTM that doesn't want to make it a gas gas? You know what I mean? So You're saying I, there were actual KTM yeah. There's a difference? Yeah, they're, they're somewhere in the line, oh, Prado okay. chose a KTM, and they put red plastic well, they, on they it. Well, they can run anything and they want over there. Yeah, exactly. Anything. So whatever they were providing him, 
I don't know if it's this new frame. I have no idea. But yeah. I think there's a little bit of issues okay. with that. Like, cause if he rides, if he replaces Barsha, they would want him truly on a gas, gas, everything. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what the differences was. Anyways, yeah, maybe. Um, I think, I mean, look, I've seen the, the, the tweets and I've seen the Instagram, like, back it down on Jorge Prado. Well, that's for the next show. Yeah. That's for the next show. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm right, just saying right, okay. it, it could uh, – it could impact Plessinger, but it, I would like to think he's so popular, it, so lovable, and you never know, could win a race, kind of like the spot Marv was in. Yeah. Just keep him no matter what. It Second is guy, odd. third guy, doesn't matter. It is odd that Aaron Plessinger, who's a great rider and a good person and everything that you want, uh, only was signed a one-year deal. That's, that's why that's, I bring this that's, up. That's a little odd. Two yeah. years is kind of the thing yeah. nowadays. For a guy like AP, two years is a thing. Almost everybody yeah. gets two-year deals these days, so something to keep an eye on. All right, one more thing to keep an eye on are uh, – our picks, this is uh, my Maxis where the rubber meets the road. It's tough. I said, which would be more popular with the fans, a Mookie win or an AP win? Same thing. They're, like, tied. Like, you both got to get it done. This is your chance to both get it done. Uh, because of the one-year deal, because Mookie got a new two-year deal, I believe. I believe Mookie Pretty got a sure new two-year deal. So I'm going to put Plessinger at the top. Rubber meets the r road. Uh, Plessinger needs to do something this year to just make sure he's still got that ride. Next year, although uh, a win for Mookie would be nice as well. Well, this segment has been about Mookie and Hunter and Adam and and uh, a AP. Yeah. And Barsha. Barsha also. Yeah. But I would like to put the shine on Mookie, Hunter, AC, AP. Put this on your bike when Barsha's behind you. Okay. So he just slides by oh, you. Oh, so it doesn't make So friction. there's no contact. Okay. And there's okay. no issues. Yes. And you just let them go. Yes. And then you, you stay upright. So everybody on this segment, if Barsha's behind you, SC won your bike, and Barsha will hopefully just slide by. Here's something I enjoyed. Barsha felt last year he was victimized by Anderson. Barsha was trying to be clean. He felt that Anderson was going after him, and he's like, all I hope is that he picks someone else to pick on this year. And I'm like, actually, Anderson and Mookie had it the previous year. So there's these guys. Yeah, it's like yeah. they're chess pieces. There's going to be – And everyone's the all victim, the right? All the in the yeah, world yeah. can't – can't right. allow them to slide by each other. No. We had – yeah. So 22 was Anderson Mookie all the time. And then 23 was Barsha Well, Anderson it was Anderson Ma Marvin at one of the races. One of the races. Oh, it was – yeah, who knows? Yeah. I mean – It's going to happen. It's always the same guys. That's yes. a Spider-Man meme <laughs> yeah, pointing their fingers absolutely. at each other. And it's like, well, you all have one thing in common. Yes. <laughs> so – well, some combination of Anderson and Barsha yeah, always. Right, right, yes, right. Just yes. how you want to do that. All right, who's going to fly out of this group, JD? Well, earlier I talked about you don't really know because everybody's on the same chassis. We don't know if Malcolm's as fast as they say. Yeah. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt in the end because it was very convincing, the words that were coming out of that camp about yeah. how good he's going, and it was very consistent. So I, I think regardless of the end result, I think – that Malcolm Stewart will come into a one with a lot of speed, right? I think he's going to be super confident because if nothing else, he's been riding with these guys and he knows how fast he's going. He's been beating these guys day after day after day. And he's going to come in thinking he's the fastest guy and he's always got speed anyway. So I just think you're going to see him probably at the top of the timesheets and maybe the free practice or maybe the first qualifying session. All right. That would be exciting for the fans. No doubt. He almost went out of Heim one last year. Don't forget Malcolm Stewart. That's it for show number three. Sorry we didn't get every single rider mentioned like you would just, like. Can we get factory riders in show three or no? Uh, you want to all privateer? I, I don't know. Show four. All privateer. Yep. Okay. Factory right, rider. All right. Main event, guys. Okay. Uh, that's it for show three. Thanks to Monster, Maxis, Maxima, and Fly Racing. We'll be back. Go to supermotocross.com for all your information on this series. See you next time.